I'm Ian Russell. Um, I work for the Office for Statistics Regulation, which is the regulatory arm of the UK Statistics Authority. My particular role is to protect and safeguard the trustworthiness, the quality and the value of economic statistics. And these statistics form just under 10% of all the national statistics in the UK. And they're often in these very valuable areas of providing information on aspects of how to make decisions regarding the economy. In relation to economic statistics, um, there are various priorities that we have. And one of those priorities is to make sure that the statistics for the regions and for the nations of the UK are as good as they possibly can be. Um, there was a review of economic statistics carried out in 2016, the Bean Review, and one of the main recommendations that Charlie Bean, who conducted that review, was that there should be significant improvements made to statistics, economic statistics, that tell the story of the economies of the different countries in the UK. So for us in the Office of Statistics Regulation in OSI, and for me particularly, as the economy theme lead, some of the areas that we make sure we look at on a frequent basis are the quality and the value that these statistics uh, present um, for users. The review that we conducted, uh, because we were looking at these public finance statistics in the different countries and the regions, meant that we needed to find out who might be using these statistics currently and what did they think about these things, such as how trustworthy were they, um, what was the quality of the statistics, did they find there were problems or issues or concerns. Um, and also we were looking at why people might not be using the statistics, to do, why particular users that we might expect to use them decided not to use them or went to other sources. So we were looking into whether people were getting messages which they could understand from the statistics, whether they knew where to look, whether the statistics were frequent enough for them and enough detail for them, what kind of uses were they able to put the statistics to, um, and the extent to which they could be relied upon to make good decisions. The main findings from the review is that there is a lot of data um, uh, about spending, about taxes that are raised, and that goes right throughout the different regions of England, different countries. So um, we didn't find there was much need for a lot of extra data around the things currently being looked at. What we did see though was that it's sometimes difficult to see what the messages are, what are the themes, what are the trends, um, and that more work could be done in helping to interpret for people what these key messages might be. Now, that role might partly be fulfilled by the current producers of the data, the likes of the Treasury, the HMRC, ONS, and the various governments. But quite often people um, take the data uh, from people who are acting as a broker for that data. So it might be a think tank, it might be an academic body. Uh, and so we see there's a need to work alongside these bodies to help provide better platforms and better ways that people can interpret the messages that are coming out of the data. Another takeaway for us is that there is a need to develop data around long-term investments in the regions and in the countries. Uh, it's not sufficient just to know about spending and about current funding. It's really important that people understand what investments are being made, what kind of liabilities are being taken on to provide those investments, and what does that mean for the long term in, t in terms of people's living standards, in terms of their well-being. Um, so more work to be done in that area, but really exciting developments that we're seeing. I should also say that uh, we are seeing really important ways of improving the presentation of budget data in particularly the developed countries 
Um, so we saw that, we see that in Wales, and we see that in Scotland. Um, it may take a bit more time in Northern Ireland, but I'm sure we'll see that as well. So I'm uh, really encouraged by what we see. We say, for instance, that people should see themselves in the data. And that's what we're increasingly seeing, even in budget data. Um, so they're taking away the dryness of just tables and tables of figures and actually saying, these are the important things the people of Wales, the people of Scotland, the people of Northern Ireland, all the English regions, this is what they're interested in. This is where we're spending against their priorities. These are the things that we think will be the outcomes of that spending. That's terrific. The statistics you might see centrally about how much is being allocated from the UK government to the devolved countries, what's called the block grant. Now that can be fairly easily identified from UK government figures. But when we actually looked at the devolved government figures, sometimes we saw the same one, so that, that should be the way it is, and sometimes we saw a different figure. Now, that, there has to be some explanation about why there's a different figure being presented in the devolved country from what the UK is saying uh, has been allocated to them, and people need to know which figure is right, and it should be the same figure. So there's more work to do on getting these things to, to be the same, uh, what we call to cohere. Um, and that's, that's some of the findings that we have from this review. One of the reasons that this review is particularly timely is that the arrangements for raising taxes uh, are changing uh, in different parts of the UK. So new powers have been given to the governments of the countries to be able to raise taxes themselves. Now, without there being a coordination and a clarity, it's possible that you could find you'd have to go to different sources to find out how much is being raised, both from that tax because it's being raised by the UK government and provided back, or how much is being raised by the Scottish government. And so we were concerned that there is a way of pulling that all together to make it easy for people who are interested in these things to look at just a few sources and be able to get the whole picture. I think what we found is that the system that's been developed over the past 10 or 15 years has matured very well. Um, but it will have to morph into an even better system as people's needs become more sophisticated. The evolution continues. There will be increasing needs to understand the spending and the funding in the different countries and regions. So it's time for a review of how that could be taken forward to the next stage. There's also increasing demands for new data um, and people will want to know more than just what the spending and the funding has been for that particular year or over the past five or ten years. They want to understand how long-term funding and financing is working towards improving living standards and well-being in that particular region, that particular country. And that data is still quite immature, um, so we'll have to develop over a period of time. And ways will be required to present that data so that it's meaningful to a variety of audiences, and, and that's, that's one of the findings of our review. Overall, what I should say is um, actually the UK is one of the leading countries for transparency and detail of its public spending and its funding. But there are countries you can look to, to how it might develop, and I'm encouraged when I see that is exactly what is happening. Um, I'm also really encouraged by the ways that budgets are now being presented in devolved nations particularly, uh, in ways which are far more meaningful to people and their lives.